Welcome to the final video of this tutorial series where we build a two-dimensional sound plotter in Max with the Flucoma toolkit. Um, this is a shorter tutorial where we, instead of using a single sound file um, as our corpus, we instead use some Flucoma abstractions to glue together many sound files and explore the segmentation analysis and plotting uh, workflow with that uh, larger corpus. To begin with, I just wanna point out a few changes that I've made to the patch since the last tutorial. I took the liberty of cleaning up many aspects of it uh, and putting the big building blocks into sub patches so that it's more readable and easy to follow for anyone who comes to this patch as a resource or maybe wants to just start using it. Uh, so as you can see, you know, slicing is, is in a sub patch on its own. Uh, the analysis is now in its own sub patcher and this cuts down a bit on the uh, intertwined patching cables everywhere, the sort of messy spaghetti effect that I had going on. Um, I also made one pretty significant change, which is the KD tree here is now named. So a lot like a data set can have a name that shares across multiple data sets. I've given it um, this, this name lookup which means we can fit it over here and then we can query it down here. And this is just another way of um, optimizing the flow of information in the patch to make it simpler, as well as, um, I guess, just keeping the logic yeah, simple. So on top of that, there's one final change, which is actually really important as well. In the playback patch here, we were using Groove um, and we were using the samps to ms object. Um, in many cases, that's going to be fine. Uh, you know, we convert a value in samples to milliseconds and the object will get the right value. Not all the time though, because the, the equation or the function for doing this is we take some number in samples, we divide it by the sampling rate, and then we multiply it by a thousand. And so if I have 44, 1000 samples here, and my sampling rate is also 44, 1000, we should get one second in milliseconds, so a thousand milliseconds. Unfortunately though, um, the MS to SAMPS object um, it uses the host sampling rate up here as the sampling rate in this function. So if your buffer of, of sound here, the one that, you, that we're using is at a different sampling rate to the host sampling rate, it'll actually get this calculation wrong. For example, we get a value that's slightly less than a second, which would mean all of our slices are no longer in the right place. And so, I've concocted the equation here in the expo object and we take the sampling rate of the source buffer. So we're just manually converting from milliseconds to samples uh, and then supplying that information to play, um, which is a little less annoying for, for you, um, you viewers because um, it won't automatically try and play back as soon as you start audio in the patch, which is what it was doing before. So those are all the big changes. What we're gonna look at now is a very um, straightforward addition to this patch that doesn't really affect much of anything that's been done already. What we're going to do is instead of using a single sound file here, um, we're going to supply many files and have a few Flucoma um, abstractions, stitch them together into a larger corpus for us. So, if I just move this all down slightly, we're going to add one more little block to it. Um, and it involves two abstractions, fluid audio files in. Um, and so we'll, we'll just start with how that works. You supply a path. Um, and this can be any path on your computer. For me, I'm supplying uh, the media folder that comes with the Flucoma package, which for me is at a, a different location to you. But it doesn't matter. You can supply anything here. You could be a folder of 
field recordings, maybe some one-shot samples, whatever you want. And this abstraction will give you a gigantic list out of all of the audio files in that folder. So it's a bit like a convenience wrapper around the folder object, which is native to Max. We can take that list output and put it into concat audio files, um, which takes a destination parameter, uh, in this case sound, and it accepts a list of audio files in. And so if I press this button now and then have a look at this buffer, it's much longer. It's also stereo because some of these files that I passed in through this folder are stereo. And so wherever there is a second channel, we'll see it, but wherever there isn't, it will be empty. So for example, this here would be a mono file, whereas this would be a stereo file. So just to recap, it's stitched all those files together or concatenated them. And so if we just look at our analysis um, briefly, the fact that we now have a two channel audio file can mess things up um, because all of the buffer processes process every channel that we um, supply to it. So in this case, when we say source sound, it's going to process left and right, which means we're getting twice as much information now. So we can easily mitigate that um, through one attribute on both of these objects. We could also you know, pre-process our corpus to only be mono. We could set it up so that it works for mono and stereo. We could make all of our files, files stereo. There's lots of solutions to the problem. But the simplest one is just to say numchans1, which means only process one channel, which by default is the first one. If I put this on both objects, move my buffers back over. So if I click this, this buffer is full of um, sound and then click this object here. We're processing much more audio now, so it's going to beach ball for a bit. Um, this, is, this is not uncommon for these big batch processes. And then we're done. And if I just turn this down a little bit, yeah, let's go back up. We get a much more varied corpus um, and lots of different sound files. We hear a lot of very gentle onsets. But what you might notice is, um, oh, let's turn this down. For a corpus of this length, which if I just have a look, it's that many milliseconds, so quite long. We only have a few segments, not a few, but not enough really, considering as well, we see how many are present here, which is quite a lot. There's one caveat that we have to take care of, which is when we slice, we have 382 segments or slice points here. Um, by default, fluid buff to list will only output 256 items from the buffer as a list, much like the ZL uh, max size attribute. So, you know, this one or the equivalent that. Um, we've tried to match the interface here. And so this by default will not actually output all of the slices of analysis that, that um, were produced by the onset slice object. So if I make this a much larger number, like 2048, and I just redo this, we have a slightly different space. If I turn my volume back up, So we get the full corpus now being represented here.